following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. And we have to to understand uh, the meaning of it. Why we have to enter into initiation. We have to understand that to enter into the initiation is to start the developing of those uh, abilities or powers or senses related with the spirit, or related to the soul, related with a human being that we need to develop, that we need to have, in order to have the right to enter into the human kingdom. Here, we have to establish a statement, that is to understand that we are not human beings. And this is something that uh, we have to comprehend in order to understand the meaning of it, I mean, of the initiation. Because people in this planet Earth believe themselves to be human beings. And that is a great mistake. And of course, this is a great mistake comes from, from ancient times, especially from the intellectual, from those that believe themselves to be wise, and they, that they know that they do not know. Many times the intellectual world is trying to find the origin of this uh, humanity they say the origin of men, but really, if we investigate in a complete sense of the word, this humanity, we arrive at the conclusion that uh, the man does not exist in this planet Earth. The why then everybody is talking about men or human beings, and if we look in a dictionary or encyclopedia, we find the word man and the word human being and uh, a title which is always given to anyone who think, who rationalizes and who walks in two feet and has of course the appearance that we have. And uh, according to the scientists, Anyone that has not the same features or figure that we have, physically speaking, is not a human being. And that is precisely the great mistake, thinking that a human being is just the shape that we have. If we investigate the sense uh, of the meaning of the word, we have to understand that human being is a being, as I said in other lectures, united with the mind. But here is another question or another problem that the scientists of this time believe that the mind is only a product of the brain. 
or the thought to the mind is only an action of those uh, great matters that we have within our head. And that what we think, when we utter any thought, is because we are using the brain. Scientists say that uh, even the consciousness is a product of evolution. But when they talk about evolution, they are talking about the evolution of the matter, of the physical matter. So therefore, consciousness, mind, and even beliefs or anything related with beyond is just a result of evolution of the cell or of the matter in this two-dimensional world. And something that is, of course, related with other dimensions, if we add here or we sustain that the human being is not the physical body and that the physical body is only a vehicle, and then that will contradict 100% all of the theories and knowledge that we find in the actual times. So that is precisely what we have to do and that we are doing to change, uh, give a complete uh, different frame to that meaning of human being. Really a human being is a creature that is called the microcosmos. And it's called microcosmos because this creature contains within himself all of the universe. All of the universe is reflected on him. So nothing is hidden for him. Even though when I am pointing the word him, it's necessary to understand that I am applying the sense of a title for this creature, but it's not him as a male or masculine, but it's a creature who has the two polarities. Because since he is a microcosmos, he has within himself the two polarities, male-female. So this creature called human being or man is male-female at the same time. And uh, being the microcosmos, I repeat, is a cosmos in the small, where if we investigate within him, we will find everything that we find outside in the universe. So if we want to find, for instance, God within the human being, we will find God within him. If we want to find the infinite, the firmament within this human being, the firmament in the human will be in the human being, in the small. We will find also this galaxy, the very Milky Way, will be within him in the small, and also the solar system. The earth himself, everything, and all of the creatures and beings which are within this firmament and galaxy in a small. Of course, we have to understand that we are talking here about characters, about that that we call archetypes. We have to understand it because it's not like, for instance, if we want to find uh, uh, a tree within a human being, we don't find a tree within. But that which is related to the tree, all the mysteries, knowledge, wisdom, will be within him. This is what, how we have to understand when we say that the universe is reflected, as we say the word reflected within him. And because the universe is reflected within him, everything is related to him. He understands everything. But here we find, for instance, right now, that for us to have the whole universe within is something really amazing. Something very grandiose. 
That's why in Genesis it is written that when God made man or the human being, he made him male, female, and according to his own image or reflection, in other words, in his own likeness. The human being or this type of creature that we are talking about existed on the earth in the very old ages, in the ancient times, before the beginning of this root race, and even before the beginning of the previous root race, which was Atlantis. Further, we arrive to the continent of Mu or Lemuria. And precisely in Lemuria is where we find the being, physically speaking, a human being, that creature, the microcosmos, three-dimensional microcosmos, having everything inside. Because if we investigate the other races that were before Lemuria, like the Hyperboreans and the protoplasmatic races, we find that they were not physical or three-dimensional races as Lemuria, Atlantis, and we are. The protoplasmatic race and the hyperborean race, they were situated in the supra-dimensions of nature, even though they were also human beings in the complete sense of the word. God was within them, the whole universe was within them. That's why it is written that they were living in paradise. Paradise is a synonym of that beatitude, that state in which the human being is in harmony and communion with all of the forces of the universe. That is called paradise. That's why it is written that when they were looking at any point in the space to this particular star or planet, immediately everything that was within that planet was reflected within themselves. And they knew by direct experience in that very moment with that type of vision, <coughs> the beings and even the psychology of those beings and the society and civilization of that particular planet without the necessity of traveling and going and talking with anyone. The type of vision is of course possible only in the beings who are within the beings. That instead of the ego they have God incarnated. So then, while the planet was evolving in the supra dimensions of nature and descending into this physical world, then the physical matter started to appear. And also, the physical features of the human being. This body that in this very moment we call physical body was in that time starting to appear into the third dimensional world. And that was of course the Lemurian race. And this is when, according to the Bible, the terrestrial paradise appeared on the earth. That terrestrial paradise, as the name is pointing out, terrestrial, was really three-dimensional, was on the earth, and was the Lemurian continent. On the Lemurian continent, God, or the Elohim, that is an organization of beings which are related with creation, the cosmo creators, they put that creature, that 
man or human being where where all the universe was reflected on him, they put it, that creature on the Lemurian continent. And there were many. That is what we call Adam, the Adam of the Bible. Or the Adam Kadmon. The Adam Kadmon is a humanity, all of the human beings together, but in communion with the universe. Gods incarnated in flesh. The heavenly man, many other, in many other lectures we say, is Keter. But when this Keter is incarnated in a human body, of course, if that is Adam Kadmon incarnated in the terrestrial paradise, that terrestrial paradise, which was Lemuria, the continent of Lemuria, was also reflected in their physical body. Since the whole universe is reflected in a human being, then we have to understand that that terrestrial paradise that was crystallizing and being created at that moment in order to place, physically speaking, that creature that we call human being, that paradise, of course, was reflected individually or microscopically speaking in each of the physical bodies of each one of the inhabitants of the Muria. So the physical body of any one of them was a paradise as well. So all of those paradises or physical bodies were living within or on the great terrestrial paradise that we call the Muria. So that great terrestrial paradise or continent of Lemuria was reflected in each of the bodies of every one of those Lemurians. But within them also, in his or their consciousness, minds and spirits were reflected the whole universe. With the time, male and female were separated. Physically speaking, so the physical body became one singular sex, whether this sex was masculine or feminine. And uh, as you know, since that time when the sexes were separated, that creature, which was called woman, was the one responsible of the multiplication and creation of those physical bodies in this physical plane. Each one of them, when they were of course still perfect, whether they were with female bodies or male bodies, they always reflect or were reflecting the paradise within them. So both, as we find in the Bible, Adam and Eve were living on paradise. So then, it's obvious that in order to multiply the physical bodies, they needed the cooperation, the sexual copulation, in order to multiply themselves, physically speaking. But within them, whether they were male or female, they were perfect human beings. This is what we have to understand. Because it is uh, a great mistake and still uh, exists when we uh, point man as male. So we have to comprehend what is the, the, the terms male, female, is what we have to apply to the separations. In the same Bible speaks male, female. But when you talk about the man, it's not pointing the male. The man itself is pointing to this creature where the universe is reflected in. And that creature called man is also called human being. Because he is a human or, or a man which is human, no animal, in which 
the being, the spirit is united with. Of course, the human being, the real man, is not an animal. And this is something also that we have to understand. An animal is an animal and not a human being. In science, also we find this great mistake. They say that the human being is an intellectual, rational animal. So they are, of course, mixing the human being with the intellectual, rational animal. We do not deny that on nature exists two animals in synthesis. Those that do not rationalize and those and, and I mean and, and the others that rationalize. The irrational animals and the rational animals. But science commits the error of pointing that the rational animal is a human being. The real human being is not, is not an animal. They of course have no ego. So what is the ego? The ego is mine. Is that material or that substance which belongs to the mechanics of nature? When we investigate this nature, we have to comprehend that it's not only three-dimensional, because with our intellect, we think. When we talk about evolution, immediately we put our minds in that theory of evolution that is related with many authors like uh, Darwin, Hegel, Huxley, and many other great uh, intellectual investigators of the last century that they uh, became battle up in that theory of evolution. Physically speaking, we know that evolution, that law, exists, but acts not only in the physical plane, also in the internal planes. When we talk about the mind, we know that the mind evolves because the mind is matter. And when we talk about matter, we have to understand that the matter exists from the mind below. Above the mind, we find, for instance, the human soul, or the human consciousness, the divine consciousness, or spiritual soul, the spirit, and many other levels. But the mind itself is matter. And below the mind we find the emotional plane called astral plane that is also matter, that evolves. And finally this physical world that also evolves. So the mind, emotion, and the physical world evolves. That is a mechanism that exists in the whole nature. So when we talk about the ego, we have to understand that we are talking about the mind. That mind that is related to the law of evolution and devolution, which are twin laws that are always active in any type of nature, mechanical nature. So this ego, this mind, is the one that we are mistaken with the real human mind. The human mind, the real human mind, has nothing to do with this type of mind that we have and that is intellectual. So we have, for instance, in this very moment, the ego, which is related to the mechanical lust of nature. That matter, that mind, obeys other forces, obeys to the forces of nature. But that matter does, does not obey the spirit, our particular spirit. Because that matter 
is related to the other labs, which are mechanical labs, and that has nothing to do with our own particular spirit. So the mind or the ego evolves in different kingdoms, mechanically speaking. So that mind, when reaches the level of intellectual animal, and then uh, uh, give us the capacity of choosing as intellect to enter into the path of the human being, into the level of the human being. And that is what we call initiation. The initiation. To enter into that level that we are called human being. But we were saying that in the ancient times the human being existed. But remember that monads or essences innocent creatures were evolving in the inferior kingdoms which are always below the human kingdom. Those kingdoms that are below the human kingdom are the animal kingdom, plant kingdom, and mineral kingdom. So millions of souls are evolving there. At that time of the Muria, when those souls were finishing their, they say, their lessons in the animal kingdom, they were preparing themselves in order to enter into the human kingdom. And in order to enter into the human kingdom, the great human beings, the great men of the Muria, were willingly dying or separating themselves from their physical bodies in order to deliver those human bodies to those souls of the animal kingdom that were entering in order to learn how to be human beings. Those uh, creatures there were learning of course, through all the great masters, physically speaking, the techniques in order to create inside of them that human being, that microcosmos, because those creatures of those souls, when they are entering into the human kingdom, were having only the body of the human. But inside, still, they were being animals. But they were rationalizing. So then, they knew, or they learned at that time, how to create the human emotion, how to create the human mind, how to create the human will. So then, with those souls, from the animal kingdom, we're creating emotion, mind, and will as humans. They were then converting themselves or transforming themselves into real human beings. And after that, they were, of course, working harder in order to work and to make the whole world, in order for the universe to be reflected in them as well and in the other human beings that were already created in other times. When the, at that time, you remember the Bible talks about the downfall of the human kingdom, or the downfall of man, when the, those Lemurians in physical body were tempted to perform the sacred sexual act out of the temple. And now I'm telling you, out of the temple, because in the time of Lemuria, when the soul were learning how to enter into the human kingdom, they were learning how to create the emotional 
human mind and will mind, or uh, human will, I mean. Human emotion, human mind, and human will. But how they were creating that? They were creating that in the temple. So the great angels, or messengers, or masters, were teaching them in the temples how to create those inner bodies. And of course, those souls were learning and were guided by them and obeying them, creating the internal bodies. And that was what we call initiation. To initiate the soul into the human kingdom. The time of the initiation. So at that time, of course, there were also other beings that we call demons. There were also fighting. In order to initiate those souls, not into the human kingdom, but to initiate them into the evolution in order to serve the purposes of nature in the evolutive or the evolutive way. Because that is what we call demon. A demon is a creature that serves nature in the way of destruction. When nature reaches the level of human you know, intellectual animal, and then the forces of evolution are starting and enter into the abyss. And the demons are those creatures that control those forces of evolution for the service of nature. And of course, they also initiate souls in order to enter into the abyss, just as slaves of nature. Bad initiations and good initiations. Those bad initiations, of course, are called by the Bible with the name of idols, that you don't have to worship idols, meaning forces of nature, or dark nature, that are of course pushing the soul in order to serve the involuntary forces of nature. And then the purpose of the spirit, or the purpose of those beings which are cosmic creators, are failing. Because the soul then is not creating, is not reaching beyond the human or the intellectual animal, but is reaching only the intellectual animal and then initiating themselves into their peace in order to serve nature as evolutive or devolutive beings or creatures. And of course, there always are in nature that battle or that struggle between the forces of light which are pulling the souls into the human kingdom and, and the other higher kingdoms, and the force of darkness that one just to accomplish with the mechanism of the forces of nature inserted them. Creatures that do not want to have illumination, they want just to, to be or to live like any plant without any effort just being in this universe mechanically. And this is it. Of course, those beings were the ones that were very active when the sexes were separated in Lemuria. Trying to find proselytes, neophytes. And it's obvious that they found them in all of the great continents, in the whole continent. So those beings, instead of performing the sexual act in their temples, under the direction of those angels, they were starting to perform the sexual acts in their homes. Because I repeat, the sexual act was sacred. Very sacred. They knew that it was only for the creation of the human being. Or in order to bring in new souls into the physical plane. So they knew how to multiply themselves. But you know, as this is written in the Bible and many other books, that that humanity ate from the forbidden fruit.
to eat from the forbidden fruit is this. The tree of good and evil is the sexual energy. When we enter into the human kingdom, when we are learning how to be a human, then the commandment of the Holy Spirit comes, which is Jehovah in Hebrew or in Kabbalah. That, that commandment is from the very inside of our own soul, the Holy Spirit, which is the sexual energy, says, You shall not perform the sexual act as when you were animal. So that sexual act in the way as an animal is forbidden. And the day that you perform the sexual act as an animal again, you will die as a human being, and you will be kicked out of the human kingdom, and you will enter into the abyss. That is, of course, in long words, what is written in short words. The day that you eat from that fruit, you will die. He's talking to the soul. He's not talking to the physical body. The soul itself that is learning. So the Holy Spirit from within is telling the soul. Here you have now a human body. Be careful, because to be a human is not to be an animal. So do not perform that sexual act as an animal. Learn. Here the angel, the master, will teach you how to perform the sexual act as a human in order to create the creature that I need to create within you. But then, the souls of the Muria incarnated in those bodies were permitted the error to return into the animal generation to perform the sexual act as when they were in the animal kingdom. The result, of course, was a fertilization of that animal mind that they were going to disintegrate in order to create a human mind. And then that animal mind started to devolve because they were initiating themselves not in light but in darkness. Not in the higher planes, but in the evolutive planes, in evolution. And by initiating themselves as souls backwards into the darkness, they were, of course, creating the ego. And the ego is nothing but the transformation of that mind in the evolutive way. That mind that in the evolutive way was of course helping nature in the mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, and animal kingdom. If you see any animal or any plant or any mineral, you will find that mind there evolving and helping the purpose of nature in the creative way. But when that mind starts to evolute or devolute, then that mind transforms into ego. And instead of helping the purpose of nature to create, it's helping the purpose of nature in order to destroy, because he is devolved, entering the abyss. The dark nature and the white nature is what also we find in the entire the, the, the lover between two women. Women on the right and women on the left. The left one is a whore, and the, left, and the, and the right one is an initiate, meaning the two forces of nature. The one that we follow, which is the white, is not going to enter into be a human being, and the left is not going to enter into darkness and to become a demon. What is a demon? A demon is a failure, a failure one. Somebody that could not reach the level of human being and now is returning and creating the ego, fertilizing the ego, and become, becoming a demon. In other words, serving the negative forces of nature, the devolutive forces. So instead of a human being or an angel, the soul becomes a demon. And that was, of course, the great failure in the time of Lemuria. 
That's how the beautiful bodies that those souls were inheriting from the real man were, of course, returning into the animal kingdom. And those bodies, physical bodies, were learning how to fornicate. Fornication is an activity of the animal soul in order to multiply this physical plane. This humanity, since it is still animal, does not know, ignores how to multiply without fornication. People think that in order to multiply, fornication is indispensable. Yes, it's indispensable for animals, but not for human beings. Any human being, a real human being, and any planet of the infinite multiply themselves without fornication. That why it is written, you shall not fornicate. The commandments are not for, of course, for animals, but for those souls that want to enter into the human kingdom. Want to initiate themselves in that. Since that time, then the white lodge, the white fraternity, which is the conjunction of all of those beings, that we call angels, archangels, seraphims, cherubims, etc., etc. That is why large, great masters, to send periodically messengers to the soul that were fallen. Messengers to the human beings, to the men, it will be a joke to say that. But sometimes we say that for respect. Because if we say that the white lodge, the great divinity, were sending messages to the animals in order for them to learn how to be humans. It's very gross and disgusting, the way of saying it. So we have to say that the white lodge, the great divinity, sent many messages to the humanity or to the human beings or to the men, we say sometimes, for respect. Some of those that we're having perfection are those that are called fallen bodhisattvas. Because at that time as well, there were many great, real human beings, real creatures, human beings in the complete sense of the word. And they also choose fornication. And they fell. And because when they choose the fornication and they fell, the ego was again being born within them. That animal mind was born in them. So that's why it is written that the fallen angels became demons. <coughs> because the ego is that that makes the soul a demon. Lust is the original sin of the human being. Lust is that activity of the animal soul that we have to control and that we have to avoid if we want to enter into the initiation of the human being. Because lust, of course, feeds the purpose of nature, mechanical nature. Every animal fornicates, every animal is lustful. So if we want to stop being an animal, we have to do the effort. It's not easy, but also it is not impossible. When an animal soul wants to learn how to be a human, this animal soul has to enjoy the lust and transmuting that lust into willpower. It's not possible to ask to an uh, animal soul to perform a sexual act without lust because the animal soul is lust itself. So this animal soul has to learn little by little to transform that lust without desire, in other words, into willpower, little by little. It's obvious that in the beginning, that animal soul starts working with 100% of lust. And the battle is, of course, the struggle is hard. How to control that lust into willpower, how to change the instincts in order to teach that physical body, that is animal, to be a human. That's the most difficult part, to teach the donkey to be a human. The donkey is the animal, is the physical body. Of course, 
since that time, the white latches and the struggle with the black latch, dark forces and, and, and the forces of light. The messengers are coming in order to teach the soul. But then the dark forces of nature through its messengers, which are demons or black magicians, disguised, always are of course deviating the souls in the other way, in order for the souls to be hypnotized or identified with many things, but keep the fornication. For the demons or the black magicians, the important thing is that every single soul should fornicate. No matter what, they can perform any exercise, any practice, is good, they say, but they should fornicate. If they fornicate, they serve uh, the forces of nature. So this is how we have to understand the, the, the slight way of the black magicians, that we always look for proselytes. They teach them how to awake consciousness, how to do this, how to do that, but still enjoying the passions of the animal beast. When somebody is controlling the sex, is developing higher forces, created the human kingdom. But in order to create a real human being, the sexual cooperation is indispensable. In order to become a human, we need to also gain the attributes of the human being. The consciousness has to learn how to behave as a human. Meaning that any animal, of course, can learn how to perform the sexual act like a human being, not with the spasm, as you, as you say. And meanwhile, still being an assassin, a thief, a liar, right? It's not that we have to change psychologically in order to, to, to become a, a human being, yeah? There's another thing that uh, we call here about transmutation. You know, you know what's a mutant? Somebody different. Transmutation is to become or to pass beyond the mutant, right? To perform a transformation within, and that transformation starts from the bottom, which is the seed. Because the very root of ourselves, if we investigate the root, the foundation of ourselves, we will find that that root, that foundation is the seed, the sexual seed. Physically speaking, is a seed. And also internally, everything comes from the sexual energy, which is a creative energy. From, from that, we have to start the transformation. And we have to learn, of course, you know, just to unite ourselves, as many think, and not to steal the sacred sperm or the sexual force. It's not just that. Different steps and levels in order to learn how to sublimate the energy. Because first, we have to sublimate the energy. And that energy is matter in the sexual glands, is matter. That matter is called semen in the man. And in the, in the female, we can call it semen as well. But both sexes have that matter. So that matter has to be transformed into energy. And as an energy has to rise. And for that we have to learn. The transmutation is not mechanical, is not automatic. The transmutation is something that we perform willingly and consciously. So if we are not using our consciousness and our willpower in order to do it, we are not doing it. Because we have to use imagination, willpower, and as well certain forces that we have to put in activity in order for that matter to become energy and to rise up. So if somebody is doing that without knowing all of this, it's just, of course, performing something that is, is having no purposes. Maybe just for the purposes of the animal soul, which is the last. Because I know that exists in this society, in this humanity, 
different uh, people that perform the sexual act and they know how to control in order to endure it. But that is not transmutation. That is just the way in order to enjoy the lust. Do you hear about the tale of Satan? The famous organ Kunda Buffer? The Kunda Buffer organ is that organ that develops in the ego of those souls that fertilize the lust without annihilating or entering into the initiation. We do not deny that when you perform that transmutation, all of that energy goes into your cells. But if you identify with it and thinking that you will be always beautiful, or magnetic, etc., you are of course feeding your vanity, your self vanity. And this is something that, this is of course things that we have to learn in order not to fall into that uh, level. We know, for instance, that when we transmute and we enter into the initiation, we gain a lot of powers and initiations. But that is not the goal, right? To be infatuated with those things. It's just a duty, as we say, is something that we have to perform. But we don't have to be infatuated or to look with the spice of the people that ignore this doctrine, of other people that reject this doctrine. Because there are many people that reject the doctrine. They don't want to be human beings. They like to be animals. So let them be. But if we confront them, even when we know that they don't like the doctrine, we don't have to look at them with spice. Oh, I am rich in the human kingdom, and this man is still an animal, and he doesn't want it, and he doesn't like it, so I am better than him. No. We have to respect. We don't have to feed the ego, because that is ego. Ego of vanity, of pride, of conceitment, right? Feeling better, as the Jesus Christ says, right? To feel holy and just before the sinner. Let God judge them, but we don't have to judge them. We have to perform our labor, and is it? Be conscious of that. Without your pride, without your vanity, without your conceitment, be conscious of that. In other words, fight without pride. Fight without anger. Fight without vanity. Mm -hmm. That is the Mahabharata, the great battle that we have to perform. Because I know many people, friends and relatives, that they don't feel that longing within mm -hmm. of working in this. They are souls that are, of course, content with being animal souls. So then I comprehend, I understand that, and I respect them. But I, of course, feel pity because I know that the fate of them is to go into the abyss and they will go to the abyss, whether they like it or not, they will fall into hell because that is the way, the lunar way that they are choosing. But here we are in the solar way and we want to be a human being. We want to enter into the initiation. Well, we have to reject the animal soul. And to reject the animal soul is not to reject the animals, but the animal that we have within. And for that, of course, we have a long battle. Many souls achieve the level of human being in one life. Others take many lives. It depends on the work. The main work is, of course, with the sexual energy. Because with the sexual energy, when we transmute it, we apply that energy to the ego in order to disintegrate. What is the ego? It's the animal. If we are, uh, people are thinking they are not in, 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 in standard level, they will, they are going for devoting. You see, for instance, many of the creatures or souls of this planet, they are, of course, going ahead. They are going ahead, but not up there, but down there. Most of the black magicians, they know that they are black magicians, and they like to be black magicians. There are other people that are uh, negated by those, and they think that they are walking on the white path, meanwhile they are not, because they are just identified with, with doctrines 
uh, most of those black magicians that are very smart, they disguise the doctrine of the black uh, path with wisdom, light, beautiful words, things that really are beautiful. Precisely when we enter into the temple of the darkness, but in the mental plane, where is the plane where we find the most dangerous black magicians, because they do not attack you. They try to convince you that you are wrong with words, with wisdom, and in a very gentle way. Never attacking you, and even hugging you, and kissing you, and showing you a lot of love. And you enter in those temples of darkness, and they are not darkness. Why, why these people are calling this temple darkness, you, you ask yourself. And you see everywhere illuminated temple with light. But it's of course a fatuous light. And flowers, statues, holy statues, symbols, and everything. And you see there the master teaching and talking wisdom and with love. How are you going to doubt about it? But if you start talking, what about sexual energy? Should we transmit with the sexual energy? And then they will say immediately, what are you talking about? God says, grow and multiply. We have to multiply ourselves. Yeah, but not like animals, we will say. But they will defend their fornication. Because they are on the service of the dark forces of nature. So they, of course, control your ego. Because that ego that you have, and that everybody has, belongs to nature, belongs to them. Because they control it. In other words, when we are walking on this path, they are controlling us. They are not controlling our soul, our spirit, but the ego. And through the ego, they are trying to prove us. Oh look, another soul is initiating in the, in the light, they say. Well, let's see. We are going to work him to our servants. How many servants do, do this individual have inside? Yeah, they have a lot, a very strong lot. Well, send him, if he's a male, a female. We will see if he really wants to leave us, to commit treason against us. And then the guy is, of course, attracted by that female and start to leave him. Or that woman is starting to be dragged by that male and he's living in the past. I said, what happened? She or he started in the past and suddenly he's living. Well, the forces of darkness were stronger. Stronger than life. Always. Not just in the beginning. In the whole path. The whole path in the struggle. The one that succeed is the one that defeated darkness. But not outside, but within. Mm -hmm. And that is precisely the initiation. The beginning of the initiation is a confrontation. The first tortillo is a confrontation, I said, to the guardian of the threshold. The guardian of the threshold. Who is that guardian? It's not something that is uh, foreign to our consciousness. It's somebody that is inside. It's not alien to ourselves. No. It's the ego. Nelly. It's not alien. It's inside. And we have to confront that ego. And we call it the Kalimun threshold. So that ego represents our own evilness, our own sins, our own lust, our own pride, our own greed, our own gluttony, our own laziness, everything that we only know. Everybody that has ego is a servant of the black light. You say, oh no, I am here in this path and I am serving the white the black light. Like, yeah, we are serving the black light, the purpose of nature. When we are angry against anyone, when we are hating anyone, when we are performing any sin against anyone or against ourselves, we are performing the wills of the black latch through our ego. In the level that we are now, we are serving just to the negative forces of nature. The white latch is the soul, the spirit, the being, 
That is the white lash. How much we have of the white lash within ourselves? 3%. How much we have of black lash? 97%. So it's like David against Goliath. But if we are smart, we can kill Goliath with one shot. And the stone that we have to throw is precisely the sexual form that we have to utilize, as David would utilize it. So that is so. David against Goliath. The initiation, the first ordeal in order to become a king of nature. Right? Because if you defeat that Goliath, everybody is going to praise you. And you will deserve to be a king or queen of your own nation. Queen of Israel or king of Israel. But what do we find now? We don't find kings. We find just we find what the Bible says, Baalim. What is a Baalim? It's a lord of darkness. Somebody that worships idols. And what are those idols? But the native forces of nature within. So in the beginning, of course, the initiate, whether it is single or is marriage, starting the ordeal of the threshold, fighting against. <coughs> and passing the ordeals of water, fire, air, and earth, which are related, of course, with light. Because the ordeal of earth is related with the gnomes and pygmies that are always active in the evolutive forces of nature. But in ourselves, those forces are already devoluting. So we are lazy, we are not diligent. So then we have to defeat laziness. How do we defeat laziness? By being active. Always an activity, consciously speaking. Because the contrary of that is to be consciously, I mean, uh, egotistically speaking, active, like a gnome, making a lot of gold, making a lot of money, in order to feel the greed. Our own greed. So to defeat or to overcome the ordeal of earth is to, is to control the nouns and pygmies, the relation of those forces with earth in our life. The ordeal of water is related with the undines, mermaids of the sea, voluptuous. They create the forces of the sea, the forces of the water, create, fertilize. But if we do not have to utilize them in ourselves, we will start, of course, feeling with the voluptuosity of lust, our ego. Fire. And then we find also the silks of the air, the mind, controlling the thoughts. By understanding and comprehending the four elements, is how we overcome the ordeals in life. Really, the, the sexual matter is a liquid fire and an igneous water at the same time. It is igneous water, it is liquid fire. Fire in the salamanders. You see how, for instance, when the couple in the magic truth, they are together to enter into the initiation, and then they are having together the ordeal of water and the ordeal of fire. But it is in this way, in order to show us that the main war with the water and the fire is in the couple. The voluptuosity and the fire. Of course, also the fire uh, is showing through the, through the anger, hatred. The fire of hatred and anger is that fire that burns the ego inside of in the abyss. So that is the initiation. A fight, a great battle that we have to do against ourselves. Within the ego, of course, 
is the soul battle to the point we have to be praying. This is something that we have to understand and to comprehend. Because sometimes we are in the astral world and you say to your inner being, My Father, my God, take me to a temple of the White Lodge. Meanwhile, the secret enemy, which is not anywhere but inside of you, and that is formed by your ego, is listening to your petition to your inner being. And sometimes they drag you to the dark places. I will cheat him or I will cheat her in order to show that this is his inner father taking her, right? Or taking him. And meanwhile, then you have to always be careful because the enemy can take you other places. That enemy is inside of you, it's you, it's yourself. That negative double is also in the forces of nature. Exactly the double of the great angels of light are always the demons in darkness. And the double of your being is that ego that we have there, but the negative double. And therefore you have to conjure. You arrive and you see this is a beautiful place. Wonderful. Let us conjure this place in the name of Christ. And if this is from the light, it will be, it will remain. If not, it will be destroyed. Because when you are conjuring, to conjure is to invite the place, the person, or that which is in front of you, to be in communion with the forces that you are invoking. And of course, in hell, in the abyss, they are not in communion with the higher forces. And they say, you are conjuring, and say, in the name of Christ, I conjure you. You are saying, in the name of Christ, I am inviting you to share the forces of the high that I am worshipping. And then that entity of darkness will say, no way, right? I am not going to share my power with that light. I mean, I am from darkness. Okay. Then, immediately, staking its original form. But, if that being is from the light, it will say, come light. And we'll repeat the conjuration with you. Memorize the conversion of the four, the conversion of the seven. So that's why uh, we say we should not trust ourselves. Do not trust yourself. Anytime that you are performing something, you will, you will, you have to think. Oh, I have ego. I will be careful. Especially when you are going. To perform the great arcana is where the ego is alert. So do not sleep and be alert. Because I repeat, the enemy is within. That, therefore, we have to annihilate the enemies. We have to kill all the unfaithful. We have to annihilate all the unfaithful. All, as of Muhammad says, we have to kill all the unbelievers. Who are those unbelievers, unfaithful ones? The sins, defects, vices that we have within. The problem is that we are, and we are having that within, right? So the only way to, to be sure that we are performing everything good 100% is when we do not have ego within. If you have ego, don't trust in yourself. And they all would use the conversion. And if they are dealing with the threshold, the kind of the threshold, when you are about to pass, and then the masters of the light call unto you and say, My brother or my sister, it is the time now. You have to decide. You want to follow us? Then you have to defeat the guardian who is your own ego. We will invoke that guardian. Which is your ego, and you have to confront him. That is an excessive moment in which you have to say, okay, bring me that son of a gun in front of me. And then you don't have to be afraid. It's you. And then will appear the monster in front of you, which will be, of course, your own defense, vices, and errors in one shape. And then we will the strength you will say, in the name of Christ. My own Savior, I conjure you. 
beast, get out of my way. And with a lot of strength and decision. You don't have to be afraid. The only way to fail is if you are afraid. Because then the monster will take will take you. Right? I mean, you will be a slave of your defense. And then in the physical plane, the initiate that didn't succeed in that ordeal because was afraid of himself or herself will leave the knowledge. So why is he or she leaving the knowledge? Well, he didn't succeed at the threshold. He was afraid of himself to defeat his own sins. He wants to feed and to nourish it, his own ego. I remember very well when I confronted my own guardian and I was awakened. The master walked me. They told me. And I conjure, I remember uh, the beast, the name of the Lord. And look, I was, of course, successful. I was with a great decision to go ahead. This is my path. To no ego will stop me. That is the beginning. In order to enter into the initiation, the threshold, that's why it's called the garden of the threshold. In the very beginning. You want to enter into the light? Well, you have to renounce your animal way. The animal way is personified in the threshold, in the garden of the threshold. You have to defeat him. And then the person starts working against him or herself. Then his defects, vices, and else. The help comes from inside, from Christ. Of course, the person has to be in chastity. How are you going to defeat the guardian if you are feeding the guardian? The guardian is the ego, and the, and the main food for the ego is fornication. So if you are fornication, the master will not even will bother to put that ordeal because your guardian is very strong and you are not in chastity. So you are not even wanted to enter into the path. But when somebody is in chastity, transmuting the energy, I said, oh, this one, transmuting. And then let us put the ordeal on it for him to advance more. So, and so then he will defeat and just go further. Well, after that ordeal, we will have many tests. Because we have to defeat that guardian little by little and with patience. First, the great ordeal. You defeat him. But then you know, the guardian will try to feed himself to you. And then you have to be in observance, attentive to yourself, in order to annihilate little by little all of your aggregates, psychological egos, in order to kill. Because one thing is to defeat the guardian in front, and another thing is to kill him. To kill him is to take the stone of David and shut him in the head. And that takes, of course, a long period of time. Meditation, comprehension, patience. It's not just that you defeat it today, the guardian, and tomorrow you are going to be a great initiate. No, you are just a neophyte. And one thing is to defeat it in, in combat, and another thing is to kill him. He says, okay, he defeated me. Now we will say, we will see if he is capable to kill me. And the ego itself, the ego has to be destroyed. When the ego is destroyed, the consciousness is liberated. The soul is free. The ego is only a tyrant. And is divided in many parts. But the first part that we have to defeat is that. After the defeating of the guardian of the threshold that we initiate enters into the lesser initiation or minor initiation and that uh, minor initiations are nine is a, a is a tested path for the neophyte and those nine initiations are received by single people or married people if the person is single you will receive nine initiations, of course, little by little. If he's married as well, but will receive that faster because he's working with the sexual force. So, 
The nine sessions are great festivities that the initiate receives internally in the soul after defeating different witnesses on the other side and gain rich powers, etc. So remember that this is really the path to the initiation and to the human being. This is what the great avatars or messengers came for. Jesus came in order to teach us. Now he feels, of course, sorrow because his doctrine is completely adulterated. Nobody knows how to be a real human being. And the hundreds and millions of Christians, they are only believing in his personality. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,